Hello and welcome to Right From The Kickoff uh, with uh, your one and only Joe Wright. And joining me as always is William Bayliss. How you doing, Will? I'm very good. A lot to talk about this week again, Joe. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a yeah. bit more high spirited this week, won't it? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we'll be talking about the football a lot more. You know, last week's video was definitely a bit of a different eye opening video, wasn't it? Before we before we get on to the football, though, um, we just want to say uh, if, if you can go and check it out at YouTube. So like and subscribe uh, to the videos and obviously to our channel um, and also check us out on Facebook and Instagram where you can follow us for more content and video action. Right. So let's get on with the football then. We're going to start with England uh, as it's kind of our home nation, our home team. Um, two games into the tournament. Bit of a mixed bag, uh, would you say, Will? Uh, I mean, obviously, the first performance, we win one nil against Croatia. We're, we're coming off a bit of a high. We think, you know, we just beat a good team, win one nil. And then obviously the the uh, oh, I can only describe it as a drab performance against Scotland with the nil nil. What did you make of it, and how are you feeling about it? Because I think we're pre- we're feeling pretty similar on how we're feeling about England at the moment. Yeah, uh, it was they were really hard to bring down. I think if John Stones had a hit, hand to hit the post, he would have scored that goal. It was a tough one in the opening ten minutes, wasn't it? Where it was slightly behind him and he headed it. It was a free header. He, it should have been on target. If it was on target, it was a goal. And I think that would have opened up the game. I know that's a, an obvious thing to say, but I feel like the game would be... Com- we will be saying something completely different if that was... If I had scored, it would have opened up more. But for yeah. me, England didn't do enough. I know uh, we mentioned before the tournament started that England were a bit defensively weak. Well, it's a we- our weakest area, so to speak. So I think... Southgate is trying to do is try to overcompensate that, and by doing that, uh, creative players haven't been able to do as much. But I have to say, the creative players need to do more to work the ball faster, break down the defenses. I mean, we've got some really, really good uh, players, and I just we, we aren't doing enough going forward. I don't know what you think about that, Joe, but we're ironically, we're all right at the back at the moment because we have. Um, we're playing quite defensively, but going forward, we just there's no fluidity to a game. And to be fair to Scotland, they put everyone behind the ball. It was hard for them to yeah. break down. But with our quality players, who we know have that ability, they should be doing better. I don't know what you think about that, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think I think partly of this comes down to, and I mean, I had a, I had a rant on my uh, you know personal social media accounts, didn't I? Uh, and I basically said that, you know, Southgate, he set sort of defensively, you know, we had two holders. I wasn't particularly, I know he doesn't trust the defence. You know, obviously we've got Tyrone Mings and not Maguire at the moment with arguably our best defender. I think just Don Maguire kind of deviating a little bit. Do you feel he has to start against uh, the Czech Republic if he's going to be seen in this tournament? Because surely you can't put him in first game in a knockout uh, game, can you? because he's had no game time, no fitness kind of thing. He says he's ready to go, but obviously I was surprised with him being able to be selected that he didn't feature at all against Scotland. The only reason being is because obviously if we're going to need him later on in the tournament, um, he, you know, he's, he's got to get some minutes under his belt. So I'd be surprised if he doesn't doesn't feature against Czech Republic. Yeah, I have to, I agree. He, he should start, but I feel like Nings and uh, Stones... Did a did a good job. Obviously, Mings cleared that ball off the line. I thought Mings had a good, get quite a good game. Stones obviously should have scored. So I don't know. I feel like hopefully he won't be. He'll probably be a little bit rusty. So that's the only thing concerning me. So if he starts against Czech Republic, hopefully that would get away a few of the cobwebs. So you are right. I think he should start. Um, what do you think? Do you think we should start Sancho or um, Grealish next game just to I think, I give think him a bit so- of impetus? To be honest, I think, yeah, I I would. I mean, you know, you, you say that, obviously, a lot of people are saying, well, Grealish didn't do much against Scotland. He came on with 25 minutes to go. You know, he had to kind of pick up the game. And, he, and actually, when he did get the ball, at least he was looking to do something with it. I feel like there's a lot of players who have had poor tournaments um, so far 
in terms of, you know, I want to, I'm going to mention it, and this might be an unpopular opinion. I don't think Sterling's played very well. Yes, he got us the goal, and he makes good runs, he does. But I just felt like, against Scotland, he was a bit lost out there. And obviously, yes, Scotland, as we've said, put 10 men behind the ball, and it is, it's very difficult to break that down. I understand that. But you've got to have, you've got to move the ball a lot quicker than we did. Um, and there was so many times where Sterling could have released the ball. Uh, you know, there's so many times where other players could have released the ball and didn't. And, you know, when you're going to, when you've got to break down a 10 men behind the ball, you know, like a massive block, you've got to move the ball quicker than we did. And we've just not done that. Yeah, uh, you're completely right. Like, we should have done some smaller passes, drawn them in, create the space in behind. Like, there's so many different things what we could have done to try and yeah. get in the channels. But let's not take it away from Scotland because. They they play well. That Billy Gilmore, which I've heard that he's actually got COVID, so he'll be missing for the next game. So which massive is crucial for them, isn't it? Massive yeah, that, for them because that'd be crucial. But he was instrumental in um, controlling the midfield, and that he is one for the future for sure. I know Chelsea rate him really highly, don't they? And I think he'd be a regular uh, starter for Scotland going forward. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think to be honest, he's he's making a shout to be a regular starter for Chelsea pretty soon. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, I know he's got to get past Kante because they they play the same position. But I mean, he's not a bad he's not a bad backup to Kante, is he at all? Um, you know, and I think he does control the midfield, like you say. Um, I just on Scotland, obviously, a great result for them against England, a great result, and obviously, respect to them, they 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 came with a game plan. I just feel like Scotland have always got a tad more passion, maybe than than kind of the England players do, because England have this kind of arrogance about them slightly where they, they feel like they're going to go into a game and win it um, and obviously Scotland came with a game plan and executed it almost to perfection you know I'd say that they were actually unlucky not to come out there with a with a win if I'm going to be honest they had chances to win the game I mean England did as well so it was a bit of bit of both but I think Scotland will be kicking themselves in the fact they didn't get the win um, I mean <laughs> Just going on to like the forward games, then because obviously we've mentioned that England play Czech Republic, they've already got four points. It looks like they're secure going through because the worst case scenario is they'll finish third, you know, one of the best place third place teams. Um, Scotland obviously got a point, they really need to go and win against Croatia. What do you for obviously talking about the home nations, Scotland missing Billy Gilmore, they really need to win against Croatia, don't they? Well, they do, um, because otherwise they're out, but. I just I feel for them in the sense of it is such a good result against England and then to go out against Croatia will be kind of not heartbreaking for them but will be a bit undeserved I think. Um, I don't know what you feel about that, Will. Uh, it depends how they play against because they played all right against Czech Republic. They didn't take their chances, but Czech Republic ultimately did did deserve to win their game. So if they did go out and lose to Croatia, you wouldn't feel that hard done by because. If you have one good perform, well, great performance against England, they get uh, in comparison to three games, then you have to say arguably on paper that you know it's probably fair if they don't. But I, I do know where you're coming from in terms of that. But so that match will be crucial, won't it? Yeah, it, w- it, w- it will be. But I think I think, and this is no disrespect to to Scotland, but I think the reason why the result was taken so differently. Um, just to give you a few stats, uh, so differently, obviously, across the border from us in England. So England have a population of 60, 70 million. So that's a massive pool of, of people to pick from when you're selecting. You know, Scotland have a population of 5 million. So uh, much, much smaller pool of players. Um, you know, they, they also, it's their first tournament in, you know, uh, the 2000 era, you know, just in general, uh, so it's the first tournament in sort of since 1996. Um, you know, so what I'm trying to say is Scotland and England's expectations are very different. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it would have been it's it would have been a spectacular tournament and will be a spectacular tournament if Scotland can get out the group stage. Because what you're forgetting about Scotland is they are the third lowest ranked team in the tournament. Um, you know they've they've got obviously like I say small small pool of players to pick from, so that result for them is a big deal. Um, you know it gives them a chance going into the Croatia game, but again I think I think it's just 
you look at the players that Croatia have got compared to the players that Scotland have got. Scotland have got some very, very good players, but I'd say man to man, Croatia just um, outshine them a little bit in terms of talent there. Uh, but we know we, we've already seen that Scotland have got the heart and the desire to go. They just need to get the the three points across the line because they will qualify. Yeah. If they do that. I, I think it's going to be a very interesting game because a draw would not suit either team because two points for third place team would not yeah, see we, either of them through. So both sides will be going for a win. So I think it's going to be an interesting one because is it going to be ones where are you going to play? more reserved and hopefully you get with Monica Andrew and hopefully Nicky win or are you going to go for it because I really hope both sides just go for it because that will make for a really entertaining game won't it yeah yeah it will do it will do definitely and I think I think obviously um, I would actually quite like to see Scotland go through um, you know, I know there's the rivalry there and, you know, I, I really wanted to beat Scotland because it was like a, a local derby for international level, obviously. Um, but I think I think just to kind of see what it meant to them, you know, obviously Scotland, if they could get a win against Croatia, that'd probably be one of the biggest wins in their history. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, what beating uh, the World Cup finalists, do you know what I mean? That's that's a massive result. Yeah, for and sure. I, I, I think I'm I'm getting back in the underdog. I think they could they could potentially win it. You know, they're not out of it for sure. They've got some good players. We keep saying this, but Scotland have got ten Premier League players, uh, including two Champions League uh, winners. So they're not they're not everyone saying, Oh, it's only Scotland, but Scotland in terms of the talent pool they currently got, it's probably one of the best Scottish sides has been in years, isn't it? Yeah. I, I... I would say apart from the strikers, uh, Lyndon Dykes and Chi Adams. Chi Adams is a lot better than Lyndon Dykes. Ob- obviously, they are both uh, both offer something different, but I think if I was a Scotland fan, that would be the area what would concern me the most because elsewhere I'll be pretty comfortable in their positions. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I think it'll be Chi- interesting one, won't I it? think Chi Adams has made a difference though. To be honest, I know obviously he's um, he he could have played for England or Scotland because he's he's fr- he's a Leicester lad, isn't he? But obviously, I think his grandparents are Scottish, um, or or something to that effect. So it means that he's eligible to play for Scotland. Um, he he did make a difference on Friday, and he, he played very well. And if he was more clinical, I think uh, Scotland could have definitely have won that one for sure. Because he had yeah. a couple of chances, didn't he? Yeah, but for me, you say he could have played for England, but I don't think he's good enough to play for oh, England. Oh no, 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 I, no. Uh... I wasn't. I wasn't saying that he was good enough to play for England. I'm saying that he he was eligible to play for either. You know, yeah. if he had decided that he wanted to try and play for England, he could have done, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't have got into the England side. That's not what I'm saying. I think he's made the right decision to go for Scotland, but I'm saying he was eligible for either country. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Um, so moving on, uh, talking of strikers, let's talk about Harry Kane, shall we? Because I know this is a big talking point at the moment, isn't it, Joe? Uh, so, I mean, I've got lots to say on this, but I'll so, let you go first. What do you think the issue is? Do you think he hasn't had enough support? Do you think he's playing too deep? Because both of which are too arguably fair points to make. Do you think he'd start in the next game? We already know that Gareth Southgate saying he probably will start. Like, on paper right now, if he stays fit, yes, he I will mean, start he's... tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I mean... And he... Or, Go on. Sorry, Joe. And also, do you think is he just exhausted from carrying Tottenham uh, too much? Do you think him playing deep, uh, because he has got so many assists and uh, for Tottenham, he plays deep and it, he's brought that into his England game when really we have more quality players to support him. Go on, yeah. Joe. I, okay. I, I'm going to throw this over to you. There's so many different things um, what could be the reason, but let's hear your thoughts. Right, OK. So, obviously, you've mentioned pretty much everything, but I'm also going <laughs> to I'm also going to throw this into the ring, which I'll, I'll throw back to you in a second. But I'll give my opinion on what you've said. Basically, I think he does try to play too deep. And you say that, you know, he's he's um, he's obviously coming too deep like he's playing for Tottenham. And we have got quality, more quality in the side. And it's like, do just do your thing, get in the box. Having said that, I don't feel like he has got a lot of service. If you look over the last two games, we've not really crossed the ball into the box. The, the couple of times he did look a threat is when 
when Reese James did put the ball in the box. We know Reese James has got a good ball, but he didn't put the ball in the box a lot. I think we need to start putting the ball in the box, making making more runs, making more threatening. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, if you put the ball in the mixer, it can go anywhere, can't it? And that's yeah. and that's the thing is as much as it's not it's not that attractive football. You know, we've got Harry Kane, one of the most deadly uh, finishers in the world. And I just don't feel like we're we're um, and kind of use it, utilizing that to the best of our ability as a team. Second, I think he is tired. I think he's run down. You know, like we said, you know, he's carrying Tottenham. Uh, I think you can tell he's a bit. He seems a bit lethargic. Um, and kind of the third thing that I kind of wanted to throw back to you. I feel like obviously before the tournament started, he said that he wanted to leave Tottenham. As we know, it's well reported Tottenham haven't haven't got a new manager in, and I think the reason why they haven't got a new manager in a lot of it is, um, you know, Kane is is a big kind of sort of talking point for those managers to come in, and I think Daniel Levy say, well, Kane's going to leave. I think Kane in the background that we've not been party to or the media has not been party to. I think Kane's already got a team that he's going to. I think personally, um, I think there's been a deal done kind of behind closed doors because why is it taking Tottenham so long to get a manager? You know, I think he is a main talking point and managers are coming in and it's like, right, okay, you can have this, this and this, but Kane's leaving. A lot of managers are going, well, you're not a world-class team then. Goodbye. Um, You know, and I think that has a lot to do with it. So I think that's playing on his mind. And the thing is, I think as much as, as much as we say he's a professional, he is, but this kind of talking, what's happening with his, kind of club future and what where he might be going and stuff. Do you think that's got something to do with why he might not, his head's being turned? Do you know what I mean? He just doesn't look on it. And, you know, there's many different reasons, like you said. But I think uh, I think that could be one. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, it could be. But I feel like he's professional enough. He'd want to just focus on England. So, And he's captain of England as well, isn't he? So you would have thought that he'd want to put all his impetus and focus on England and you'd hope he is so I not, hope not that's not the reason but it yeah. could play a factor into that not, I know what you're saying not meaning to kind of talk over you or anything but I just want to kind of point something out as well you know you talk about the fact that he's a consummate professional he is and he, he has always been good for England we know this but and it's a big uh, but when we're talking about the fact that he might be leaving Tottenham, this is the first time in his career that he's had this kind of talk surrounding him. As Good much point. as we're saying, as much as we're saying that you know he's a professional, he's never had to deal with this in his football career. So you know we've never seen him where he's had this much pressure talked about him in terms of a transfer. So this is all new for everyone, including Harry Kane. So you know. You kind of sit there and you go, it could be affecting him, and I, I, th- I personally think it is. I might be wrong, uh, but I, I just the cane that I'm seeing now and the cane I've seen for England and Tottenham all season long um, isn't the same player at the moment. Yeah, um, for sure. And we, you know, I think we're lucky. We are lucky in the fact that we beat Croatia on the in the first game because that, that puts us basically through. Um, you know, in terms of also getting the draw, four points you'd think would be enough to qualify. I've had a look at the groups and I think there's going to be a few teams that will finish third, in third place with three points. There's going to be a couple of teams. So you'd think four points would be enough. Um, I just, I'm just not confident coming up against, you know, the bigger, the bigger sides. I think... We we could play completely differently against Czech Republic, but I don't see us playing completely different because I know how Gareth Sackett likes to set up his teams. I mean, I mean, I know we've talked about it, but what would you change? Would you change? Would you change anything? You know, what do we need to do to get the fans back on side? Well, here's a really good stat to support that, Joe. That with in the, since the last fourteen games, sorry, thirteen games, how many goals do you think we've scored? I have got, I've not got um, the stats to hand like you have, but I know we've we've had quite a lot of 1-0s. So I'm going to go, in 13 games, I'm going to go 12 goals, maybe, 12, 13. You were close. We've scored only 14 goals. And bearing in mind, we've played the likes of Ireland, Austria, Wales, 
well, Wales are doing quite well. Uh, play Czech Republic. Like, we, it just shows that we need to put more creative players and get more uh, chances in the game because we're just not putting them away recently. I, and I think I just backed it. What we've been saying is that they need to do more going forward. I, I, I don't know what you think, Joe. Yeah, no, I do, I do, and I think you look at. I don't care what anybody says now with about you know all these you know foreign players make these players look better and all this stuff. We know these boys are talented. We've seen it week in week out in the Premier League. We've seen a lot of these lads like Jack Grealish, like Rashford, like Sancho in the Bundesliga, like Bellingham. You know, we've seen them score individual goals. You know, so if you're talking about if you're talking about kind of, oh, it's about the players around them, these lads, a lot of them can score, you know, individual brilliant goals. Um, you know, Harry Kane has carried Tottenham on his back all season. Yes, all right, they didn't finish um, in the best light, but he got the most assists and most goals in, in the Premier League, which is fil- filled with players like De Bruyne, like Yuri Tillemans, you know, Lukaku's played in the Premier League, you know, these players that are all doing really well in the tournament, do you know what I mean? So, um, all these players that have played in the Premier League that are shining in this tournament, you know, our players do match up to those, but for some reason, when it comes to international level, we just can't seem to gel together. So, I'm not having the, or the, you know, that that kind of, the foreign players make them look better. We have, we have top-class, world-class players, we do, but it, it just doesn't seem to click at international level. What do you think of that, Will? No, I, I completely agree. We need to do more going forward. But the last thing on the England suggest I'm going to say is that it is still early in the competition. So the, the knockouts is a completely different ball game. So let's just see what happens. Hopefully we'll grow. We'll get a good win uh, tomorrow against the Republic. And then that will give us confidence going forward because we we. We really we have nothing to lose against Sheffield. We just need to. I think we just need to go for it a bit more. Um, but yeah, early days still. So we'll see what happens. So uh, I might just mention Wales quickly, Joe. Because yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, let's Wales. Congratulations to Wales. They finished second in the group. Everyone didn't think they were going to either make it out of the group, and to finish second in that group is. A really remarkable feat, to be fair. I think credit to them. I don't know why everyone's wrote them off before because after the last Euros, they reached the semi final, didn't they? So, I fair think play to yeah. Wales. And you have to be impressed with what you've seen so far. Yeah, you have to be. And I think, I think just going back to, to kind of the Euros 2016, obviously they did really well, got to the semi finals. Um, wouldn't be surprised if they get to the quarters this time around, at least. Um, but I think it's it's again it's that passion, it's that desire. But I think the reason why a lot of fans are shocked is because it was let's be honest, it was the story of the Euros and getting to the semi final last time round. Um, and they have a similar quality team that they they they've kind of lost a lot of players, they lost a lot of leaders. You know, Ashley Williams, you know, Robson Carney who scored that brilliant goal against Belgium. He's no longer playing for them. You know, so they lost a lot of players. I think there's about eight players in the squad in total that are from 2016. Um, so, you know, when you talk about the fact that I don't know why people are surprised, it's because there is a lot of the young guard coming through. Um, you know, and it's, it's time for them to create their own story and they're doing it. Um, just, just on Group A in general, I mean, me and you both said, didn't we, that Turkey might be possible dark horses. Uh, they've had a, an abysmal. Oh, they've had a stinker, haven't they? I mean, they've. They, I mean, they've. They've obviously conceded uh, a lot of goals. Obviously, got absolutely battered by Italy. Um, got absolutely battered by Wales. Let's not forget Wales missed a penalty in that two 0 win as well. Uh, you know, they they had more chances to win, so it could have been three or four really to Wales. Um, and of course, they lose to Switzerland yesterday. I mean, it's. <sighs> You just, you just. I remember watching them and thinking, "Come on, let's let's see what you can do." You know, obviously, there's a couple of, you know, I say a couple. There's a Leicester player in there in Sionchu. Let's see what you can do. And it's just been a, it's just been a bad tournament. 
for them. They're, they're obviously out now. Uh, obviously, Switzerland have to wait, wait. But you'd, again, you'd think that four points would be enough. It might not be in this tournament, to be honest. I could see somebody with four points missing out because there are quite a few groups that can get, you know, four po- points third place. Um, but, you know, Wales are through and well done to them. Well done to obviously Robert Page and, and kind of the Wales staff because with everything that's going on in the background, obviously with Ryan Giggs and stuff as well, they've done incredibly well to kind of just shut that out, shut the noise out and get it done. Yeah, they really um, have to be fair. You know, Bale's, Bale's not been kind of the same sort of top level as he was in 2016, but he's been he's been absolutely instrumental in other ways. And he's a world class footballer. I mean, he is he was up there with Ronaldo and Messi, I think, at one stage in his career. I'm not saying he, he was there for long, but I think there were some people talking about him in the same breath as, as those players. And you can see why, to be honest. Uh, you know, he's he's a top class uh, footballer and you know, he really is he's helping them out. But they they've got really good players elsewhere as well. And I think it's all about a team unit. You know, when you've got a player like Gareth Bale, you think, right, he's going to drag them. But they've been great as a team. Defensively, they've been great. You know, they went down to 10 men against Italy yesterday. They were 1-0 down already. They went 10 men down. You're thinking, oh, OK, so it's going to be 3-4-0. Finish 1-0. You know, they work so well as a unit. And I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Yeah, and fair play to them. So, they're, obviously, they're guaranteed to go through now. We're not sure who they'll be playing next, but you'll have to back them regardless of our opponent. They've got that uh, team ethos, don't they? So let's hope they can go far in this competition once again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think, I've got to be honest with you, I think if England were facing them in the next round, I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy us, to be fair. <laughs> I yeah. Really wouldn't. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yes, that's Group K. And obviously there's there's other groups. Hey, what, what are the groups going on today, Will? Just so we can just kind of finish uh, it off talking about them so it's uh group b and group c the final game so at seven o'clock you'll, sorry at five o'clock uk time it'll be the uh group c matches so north macedonia who are already out against the netherlands are already through so the, the netherlands are already guaranteed to top the table um you'd still think it'd be a you'd think it'd be a netherlands win wouldn't you just because yeah. of the quality of the two sides yeah 100 percent, and the next game is uh, Ukraine Austria, which you could say they're both through. So a draw would suit both teams, to be fair, because that will guarantee they're both through. They are on equal goal difference and uh, equal points. So a point, oh. both teams would be happy with a point, which means they're guaranteed through. But they want to be secured second spot, I'd say. So ooh, it'll be interesting that game, won't it? I think it, it's, it's a weird one because it's, it's it's a game for me, that particular game. It's an interesting watch. And I think, like I say, that particular game is one you don't want to lose, but I think you also want to go and win. So it's a bit of a 50-50 there. Um, because, like I say, I think if you, if you lose this game, obviously they're both on uh, three points. If you lose this game, I think you could be out, to be honest. Um, you know, on three points, at third place, and um, so you you've got to you've got to try and make sure that doesn't happen. And like I say, four points again. Yes, it's it's all right, it's good. But again, I'm four points for me now. I'm getting a bit nervous. Will do you think four points is going to be enough to see you through? Because there's it's quite a few groups now that four points is kind of the the main hit. Obviously, Switzerland got four points yesterday. We know. Um, we know that you know Scotland, uh, Croatia are playing. The winner of that game goes on to four points. Um, obviously, England are on four points as well, so they could lose the game against Czech Republic. I'm just, I'm just, I know I'm being kind of pessimistic, but you kind of sit there and you go, "Is four points going to be enough?" Yeah, are you feeling a bit touchy, Joe? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> certain, I don't think, I don't think. From an England perspective, I don't think we'll lose tomorrow. I don't think we might draw it, but I don't think we'll lose. Um, yeah. So I'm not particular. I'm not too worried there. And I think the four points that we've got anyway is going to be enough. But it's just you do sit there and you you worry for some of these teams who have got four points. Is it going to be enough? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously t- Wales got four points, but they finished second, so they're they're all good. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> only time will tell on that one. So, moving on to Group B, which is happening at 8 o'clock tonight. So, the first game, well, they're both happening at the same time simultaneously. So, the first game is Finland uh, against Belgium. Now, Belgium are already guaranteed to get through, but Finland, you can only see it go one way for a Belgium win. So, if that were to happen, you would say Finland would either finish third or fourth, depending on the Russia Denmark match. Yeah, which so, is happening so as well. Do you know what's do you know what's hilarious about this? What? Is Denmark have got have not got any points. Um obviously losing to Finland in the first match after the Chrissy Eriksson incident, obviously. Uh, so you feel like that one goes under an asterisk. Um and then obviously they, they did well against Belgium but lost. But Denmark, I've got a sneaky feeling, will still finish second. Yeah, because of the goal difference. So if <laughs> this is quite funny actually, uh, because if Denmark beat Russia, which you think they would do, and if Belgium and by uh, two goals or more, then De- Denmark will finish second. Um, I'm just not sure if they're equal because when I'm I'm looking now at the BBC thing and. Russia is second, even though they have the worst goal difference than Finland, even though they have the same amount of points. So I'm thinking, because Russia beat Finland, that might be the reason why. But it, could be a, sure. it could be, be a head-to-head head thing. So that's what I'm not sure about, if I'm being honest. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But talk about Denmark, if that's not the case, uh, for them to get through, because you're back when you beat Russia. And obviously, Belgium are probably guaranteed to beat Finland, but you never know in football, do you, Joe? No, you never know. But I think I, I want, I want, I want Denmark to get through. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I was saying to you, wasn't I? I'm just obviously just kind of leading on from our last podcast. I when 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 uh, Denmark scored against Belgium, I celebrated like it was an England goal. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was up, I was cheering. Um, you know, I was I was almost screaming the house down. My dog, my dog, bless him. He 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 crapped himself, but uh, yeah, it was it was a <laughs> unique experience for sure. But um, I'm hoping that Denmark can make it just because I they've had a very difficult tournament for different reasons. Yeah, so. for sure, and yeah, uh, I agree with that. Um, what happens with that, shall we, Jay? Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see what happens, and you know it's 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 going to be interesting for sure, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, and I think that will conclude today's podcast, won't it, Joe? Yeah, it does. Um, like we said at the start, make sure you uh, like and subscribe to this video, obviously on YouTube. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we may be co- go uh, taking the plunge and going on Twitter very soon. We'll have to discuss that between me, myself and Will. But uh, yeah, um, if you've got any comments to make uh, about the podcast, who do you think are still favourites? You know, who are the emerging kind of favourites coming from the group stage? Obviously, Italy now are probably an emerging favourite. Um, you know, who else has kind of caught your eye? And who has underperformed? As obviously we've mentioned, we think it's England that have underperformed so far. And uh, Turkey. <laughs> and Turkey, massively. So, yeah, please please let us know. And make sure, please, make sure you comment on the video as well. We'll get some comments in and also like and subscribe. All right, cheers, guys. And we'll we'll be back on next week. We're talking probably about the uh, the knockout stages and hopefully me, me and Will haven't, you know, gotten too depressed about England being knocked out eventually. Well, like we all know they will do. Yeah. Uh, so we'll yeah, wait and see what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, make sure you uh, you follow us uh, and just keep listening.